Hello, and welcome to a tutorial on hacking the Microsoft Band. Now, the term hacking, I don't actually think fully applies here because we're not going to do anything extremely cool like installing Linux on the band or anything like that, but uh, we will be getting access to our data. So here is the Microsoft Band. There we go. No bizarre reflections. You're going to need a few things before you get started. So first of all, you're going to have to have some kind of device that you can sync your band to, so that's Android, iPhone, or Windows Phone. But one of the key features of that device is that you have to have the ability to set a static IP and an associated gateway for your Wi-Fi connection on that device. Now here is my Windows Phone. One of the things it's lacking, I have a, nine, a Lumia 925. One of the things it's lacking is the ability to do static IP. Now, of course, my band is generally associated with this device, but because of that lack of static IP ability, I can't use it. Fortunately, I have here a tablet. It's an Android tablet, Tegra Note. That's what it is, and it says it right here. One of the things Microsoft does with Microsoft Health in the Google Play Store is restrict the app to phones, not tablets. But if you search for Microsoft Health followed by APK, you will be able to find a secure and safe download of the app that you can then sideload, which is fine because it's a free app anyway, and sideload it onto the tablet. I'm not sure if many of you are going to have that problem, but I did, and I was able to overcome it. So we have the tablet, we have the band, of course, and one other thing you're going to need, some kind of Unix machine. I ran through this on both the Mac and on Linux, and believe me, it's significantly smoother on a Mac. So if you have access to a Mac, great. If you don't, you can always use Linux, which is free. It's just going to take a little bit more of a setup process. This here on the left, this is a an SSH connection that I have open into, into the Mac. What I'm going to do is, um, let's clear the screen here. Type IF config. You're going to get a bunch of things showing up. Find the active network connection among all of these things. So up here, you're going to have, this is a loopback connection. It's not that one. You got a bunch of other random things. But this one here has the IP address, has the only IP version 4 address that's currently active. This one might have, this is loopback. So we know this is the active one. OK. Denote its IP. So mine is 192.168.64.173. We're going to go over to the tablet, open up settings, go into Wi-Fi. I'm connected to TZS Chromium, so just tap and hold on that connection and choose Modify Network. Chances are pretty good that your IP settings are going to read DHCP. Change them to static. Then I'm going to hide the keyboard here. This is the important portion. Under Gateway, type in the address that you saw on ifconfig. So it's 192.168.64.173. Type that in, and when you're done, hit save. I'm just going to back out of here. So now that we've changed that, just going to open up an internet browser. We're going to go somewhere. Um, that is cached. So let's go to, here we go. I've attempted to go to a website, and you can see here the progress bar, it's, it's very much stuck. And that's because what we've done now is we have redirected all of the internet traffic from the tablet over to the Mac. And the Mac has no idea what to do with it. It's just receiving these packets and throwing them out because it's very confused. Here on the Mac, we still have the ifconfig output. Remember, this is the internet, um, sorry, the, the network connection that we've chosen. Denote its name, EN1. Write that down somewhere or just remember it. It should be easy to remember. Then here on the terminal, type VI and then choose a file name. I chose something uh, very silly, bandhack.conf. Conf for config. In that file, we want to type RDR on, in my case, EN1. It may be different for you. Then INET, proto for protocol, because now we're defining any TCP packet to any port 80, 
redirect it to localhost on port 2300. You're also going to want to add the second line. It's the exact same, except for this port here, instead of being 80, it's 443. And 443 is SSL. This second line here is actually the one that's going to be intercepting the traffic from the band. I put 80 in there because that was my first guess, and I didn't stop to think that <clears throat> Microsoft would be using a secure connection, but of course they are. So when you're done with that, escape colon WQ, and down here you see WQ stands for write, as in write the file, then quit. The next thing we need to do is actually start rerouting those packets that the Mac receives from the tablet back out to the internet. This is called a transparent proxy. One thing I didn't mention at the beginning is that we need to install a program called Mitem Proxy. And it is spelled like it sounds, M-I-T-M Proxy. It stands for Man in the Middle Proxy. And what you're doing is for all packets that come in, you're making a copy of them off to the side using this proxy and then allowing them to go to continue on their way out to the internet. That's the, the most basic explanation here. So just Google Mitem Proxy or you can go to mitemproxy.org. Installation, and they say here, use pip install Mitem Proxy. Now this is true for Mac, this is also true for Linux. As I was editing this video together, I realized that I skipped an extremely important step when I was filming yesterday because I had already done it on my tablet and sort of forgotten about it. Before you can actually start routing your secure internet traffic from the tablet over to your Mac or Linux machine and through back to the internet, you need to set that device as a trusted device on your tablet. The way to do that is on the terminal here in your Unix machine, in the home directory, ls dash al. That's, um, that will show hidden files and it will also provide this long list format, which I prefer. Here is the directory dot mitem proxy. If we change it to mitem proxy, you will see a list of files and this is the important one right here is the dot sir. What you need to do is get that mitem proxy dash ca dash cert dot sir, this file right here, onto your tablet somehow. I happen to have a web server, so I copied it from my Mac onto the web server, then browsed to it on the tablet, and simply installed the certificate that way. You can also copy that certificate file onto your desktop, and then use whatever your mail program is, or webmail, it doesn't really matter. Just send it to yourself as an attachment, and on the tablet, open up that certificate and install it. See, the blog loaded, and and I've been thinking about why that happens, and we don't need to go into it, but believe me, it shouldn't take this long, right? And you can see this other tab here. <sighs> of course, it loaded. Ignore that. If it takes that long, you know there's a problem, so we're gonna fix that, and it's right here. sudo systemcontrol-w net.inet.ip dot forwarding equals one. Type that in, hit enter. It should prompt you for your password, as this is the first sudo action we've taken. Type it in, hit enter, and you will now see net.inet.ip.forwarding. You will see zero to one. Mine has already been enabled, and by the way, that's why the traffic from the tablet went through. One to one. Very good. So now that that works, you can go to your tablet or your phone and load up some page, and uh, you will see that it, it should start actually routing traffic properly. You'll start being able to browse the internet. The next command we're gonna need to run is this one. sudo pfctl-d disables it. Then sudo pfcontrol-f, as in let's read the next, let's read the file, bandhack.conf-e to enable it. And when you run that, you will get this output, pf disabled. Now, this is something I looked it up. It seems archaic and useless, so if you get it, don't worry about it. If you don't get it, don't worry about it. It's gonna work either way. Once that's finished, we're gonna go back into the Mac. And let's not forget, 2300 is the port that we defined in the configuration file earlier. So it's mitem proxy dash capital T dash lowercase p 2300 dash dash host. When you run it, you're going to get this blank window here. 
nothing's going on. So now what we need to do is load up the Microsoft Health app. And right out of the gate, as soon as it loads, you can start seeing all these requests filtering down. And it is syncing with my Microsoft Band, which I'm actually not wearing at the moment. It's right here. So let's give it a minute to finish syncing. All the while, by the way, you can see here all of the oh, all the requests it's collected. It collected just 40, uh, yeah, 46 requests just now, just from the Microsoft Health app loading. Now we're not going to want any of the post stuff, but you can go down here and see all of the various things we want. Now there are so many requests. What we're looking for is a get request, and we want one from prodcs dns dash cargo dot com slash v one slash something. So here on the tablet, as usual, it has collected steps, calories, walks, workouts, and sleep. Because those are the things that I do. I'm gonna pick this events one. So oh, I'm sorry. Use your arrow keys on your keyboard and move the, the yellow double arrows to the request you want, and when you've gotten to the one you want, just hit enter. It'll take you to this, and now you're gonna get two things. You're getting requests, and you're getting response. Using the tab key on your keyboard, we'll switch back and forth. So I'm gonna go over to response here, and just scroll down, again, using the arrow keys. Look at this. So this is a workout from today, February 6th. The workout, the, uh, the recording of all the data was successful. Average heart rate 149, calories burned 1027. The breakdown of the calories, how long it lasted in seconds. Then it's a unique event ID. Now if you if you look here at the URL, it says top one. So it was selecting the top one of my workouts. But suppose I want to see the last 10 of my workouts. So I hit tab just then. Then you tap the E key. E is an echo, or in this case, E is an edit. You're gonna get a little prompt down here that says edit request, query path URL header form raw raw body, or method. We want to edit the URL, and U is highlighted in blue, so we'll just tap the U key, and change that top one right here to a 10. Hit enter, and then tap the R key, as in resend this request. Here, if I were using a properly encoded terminal, you, you would see this circular arrow saying, hey, yes, we've resent it. Now we've gotten back 1.96 kilobytes of data. Let's take a look at our response. Hit the tab key, scroll down. And now here you can see the next object in this JSON data is another workout from yesterday. Also successfully connected it, uh, collected it, February 5th. And we talk about how long it lasted, how many calories I burned. It's significantly less than today's because it was kind of short. Then we see February 4th, successful, calories burned, humongous number, because I don't like being fat anymore. I don't want to be fat. I never liked it. I don't want to stop it. I'm going way off into the weeds here. So now look, February 3rd, and you get the point. So now we've collected the top 10 workouts that we can keep going down and down and down and further down, and you'll see, let's see, let's pick one. There we go, January 29th, and it keeps going. So that's all well and good. Now this one, I'm going to use it again. going to hit enter on it. Tab to go back to request, edit, URL, delete all of this, except for this portion. So make sure, and for some reason, it resolves into an IP. But when you hit enter, it's going to go back to prodfius.dns-cargo, etc. So here, because I want to see all of my data, I'm going to do question mark, dollar sign, expand equals sequences, comma, info and this is case sensitive so type it precisely that way hit enter hit okay before I hit R to resend it take a look the last one 10 events was 1.96 K I'm gonna hit R it's taken a lot longer 35 K worth of data and I'll hit tab and I assure you I have looked at this data it goes on for a long time we want to get this request now into a file so we can process it, right? Tap the B key, B as in Bravo. Save response body, and I'm just going to save it. Tilde slash all data 
tutorial and today's date. This file extension is necessary, .gz, because this data is natively gzipped. So just hit enter. We're going to go to the next step. Doing an ls in my home directory on my Mac now shows all data, tutorial, and the date, and gz. If you were to do file on that file, you see that it is, in fact, a gzip compressed data. So we need to unzip it, gunzip, all data tutorial. We're going to clear it in ls. So now all data tutorial no longer has a file extension, and it's humongous. So then we do file again. This time it's ASCII text because it has been uncompressed. We'll just take a peek to make sure everything is on the up and up. Lo and behold, there it is. So there you have it. We've been able to get access to our data. We can crunch it in all kinds of interesting ways. And I plan to maybe make some web apps that will crunch this data and you know convert it into a nice web-friendly interface. And I'm one of those people who's kind of an oversharer on the internet. And so this stuff will end up on my blog. I might put some on Facebook or whatever people are using these days. I guess it's Twitter, maybe. The point is, we have access to our data now, and we can do this at any time. I'll see you guys later.